marriage. Notice how the gospel speaks of, you shall not kill, and then it goes right into anger. It's amazing, isn't it? Jesus, in a very different way, is comparing the anger that we have to killing, and how we kill with our thoughts, our words, and our actions, don't we? And we always justify our anger, don't we? We all do. We all do. We all justify it. And said, you know, we, we should get angry. That we deserve this to get angry. There's a beautiful movie that my parents and I saw this past week called Amish Grace. You can see that. Some people at the early mass read the book. Um, it's about the killing of the Amish children in Lancaster County, Nickel Mines. And it's a beautiful movie in terms of the power of forgiveness. But after Charlie Roberts did that heinous crime, three elders of the Amish community went in to visit Charlie Roberts' wife. And of course, she had no idea. She wasn't sure what these Amish men wanted as they came into the house. And the first thing that the head elder said, he said, we forgive your husband. And then he asked if she needed anything. And they said, because she's going to be under tremendous condemnation, and they want to support her as much as they possibly can. And then she asked if any of the three that were there had lost one of their children. And the youngest of the three elders said that she lost her daughter. And then he went on to say what a deep wound it was, but that he needs to forgive. Before they left, the head of them said, we will not allow hatred or anger to destroy our hearts. As you can imagine, my friends, and then the story goes on about one of the mothers who was the oldest one that was killed, and she was going to be a, a teacher, and she was completely devastated by this whole thing, as you can well imagine. And it was her husband that went to see Charlie Roberts' wife. And that's what she was angry about. Why did you do that? And they had this discussion in the kitchen. And her daughter was in the other room listening to this. And after they finished the discussion, he went to see his daughter. And the daughter, who was very young, and I'm not sure how old, maybe five, six, seven type area, she said, no, Dad, I hate him too. And he said to his little daughter, I understand. I understand. And then he says to her, does the hate feel good? And she said, no. He said, the problem with hate and anger is that it's very hungry and it has lots of sharp teeth. It eats your whole heart and leaves no room for love. The discussion that he had with his wife was always based around the battleground. And everybody's heart, there's a battle, my friends, when things like this happen. On one side of the heart says love, the other says hate. One side of the heart says anger, one says peace. One says hold a grudge, one says forgiveness and mercy. Our heart's in that battleground. And he said, you know, we must choose the better part. As hard as it is, he was constantly saying that to his wife. The other one, who lost two children, she said, you know, every morning I wake up to hear the voices. The silence reminds me that they are gone and it makes me angry. She said, I offer that up to God. And then the next hour, I offer it up again. The next hour, I offer it up again. The next hour, I offered it up again, and again, and again, and again. She said, I can't let the anger destroy my heart. You know, my friends, if there's anything in this world to justify anger, it's that crime. And yet that beautiful Amish community, my friends, tells us what we must do. You know, they put it in such simply ter simple terms. Anger and hate has such an appetite, doesn't it? 
has such an appetite, and it eats the whole insides of us out. And that's what Jesus is saying, isn't it? It just destroys us from the inside out. From the inside out. And then the other part of the gospel talks about us for God sent marriage. And I would like to briefly talk about marriage. One of the keys to a successful marriage is to have a desire for your spouse. A desire for your spouse. And there's a lot of similarities, my friends, to a priest being married to the church and to couples being married. There's a tremendous amount of similarities based on that. You know, as you get older in your marriage and then the anniversaries increase, is your desire supposed to decrease? Is it supposed to, my friends? As the anniversaries increase, is your desire supposed to decrease? No. No, absolutely not, my friends. Absolutely not. Just like me as a priest. That means that as I increase my priesthood, my desire for being a priest is supposed to be less and less. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do you have to work at it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think there's two beautiful principles, and they sound simplistic, my friends, but how relevant and how effective they are. One is the principle of attention. The principle of attention. The desires increase in the direct proportion to the amount of attention, attention we give to our spouse. Let me repeat that. The desire in ourselves increases to the direct proportion to the amount of attention that I give to my spouse. More attention, more desire. Same with my priesthood, my friends. More attention I give to my priesthood, guess what? My desire increases. My desire increases. Is it easy? Not all the time. There's a Protestant minister who does most of his ministry is on marriage. And he said, you know, when my wife is sleeping, I just watch her. I just look at her. When she's cooking, I just look at her. And he said, an amazing thing happens when I just look at her. My desire for her increases. Why? Because he's fixing his gaze on something beautiful. His wife. His wife. Not fixing his gaze on anyone else, fixing on his wife. She's not doing anything. She's sleeping. She's cooking. But he's gazing. He's gazing. Simplistic? Yeah. Incredibly effective? Absolutely. Absolutely. The other one is principle of affirmation. A simple compliment or praise. It's easy to criticize, we know that. It's easy to be critical, it's easy to judge. Our weaknesses, our faults are out there, my friends. We all recognize it, especially when we live with somebody. They're a parent. We see it, we live with it. But you see, when you praise or compliment, it shifts our focus, doesn't it? No longer are we looking at that fault, we're looking at something good. It shifts our minds. It shifts our minds. A good friend of mine texted me a card that she received from her husband. This is what it said. I ask the Lord to bless me with an angel in my, in my life. And so you came from heaven as the answer to my prayer. You know, my friends, and then the back side of this, it said, the longer we're married, the more I'm aware when I asked for an angel, God sent me you and answered my prayer. Simple little card. Doesn't say a whole lot, my friends. I think she fell. She was prepared to an angel. To an angel. Simplistic. Again, sure. 
incredibly effective. Incredibly effective. Nothing in the world is more satisfying than a good marriage. A young couple was visiting with an older couple celebrating their 50th anniversary. <clears throat> and one of the younger couples said, 50 years? That's a long time to be married to one person. The gentleman looked at his wife and simply said, it would have been a lot longer without her. It would have been a lot longer without her. Those beautiful principles, my friends, are so effective in relationships. Principles of attention and the principle of affirmation. <coughs> beautiful for relationships. And the whole topic of that my friends. Beautiful, relevant topics for this week that all of us need to reflect on. May we eliminate the anger and hatred in our lives, my friends. And we put those two principles of practice into our lives.